Welcome to the shortest ever video lecture on topic 8.5 acid deposition with the longest ever essential understanding, which is this. Increased industrialization has led to the greater production of nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides. This is producing some acid rain, which is damaging our environment. We could reduce these problems if we collaborated nationally and globally, but we'd have to actually collaborate. Our objectives are going to define acid deposition state some examples of pollutants that can lead to acid deposition, and then we're going to describe pre-combustion before we burn the fossil fuels and post-combustion after we burn the fossil fuels methods for reducing the quantity of pollutants that we are releasing into the atmosphere. So first up, let's define what even is acid deposition. This is basically talking about acid rain. So acid forming pollutants are being deposited on Earth's surface. They're often released into the atmosphere where they combine with water vapor, and then fall back to the earth as acid rain. Our big culprits are nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides. Interestingly, not, not CO2, even though CO2 does come with its own issues. There is lots of CO2 in the environment. We know that. We know that it can sometimes combine with water to form carbonic acid. It is an acid, and it can dissociate into those hydrogen ions that give the properties of acids. However, this is a very normal quantity of acidity in our rain. So CO2 acidities are normal. Nitrogen and sulfur oxides are going to lead to acid deposition, acid rain. We've got stuff, not just rain, but also hail or snow that has pHs lower than 5.6 because of pollutants that are being released in the atmosphere causing the acidity of the precipitation to be less than, more acidic than the 5.6 that comes from CO2. Examples of the pollutants, um, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, more nitrogen oxides from our cars, from factories, being released into the atmosphere, combined with oxygen, react with water, and we end up with these acids that then fall down to the earth and cause lots of issues. So how can we deal with acid rain? How can we prevent it? How can we help? So one option is pre-combustion. We can actually clean our fossil fuels before we burn them. So an example is making clean coal. So we can crush the coal and then put it through this machine, bloat the coal out of the water, which leaves all the impurities, the impurities, the nitrogen and sulfur and other junk is going to be washed away from the coal. And now I've got clean coal that's only going to make CO2 when I burn it the sulfur and the nitrogen, it's here in this water that we leave on the earth. It's fine. We're fine. Everything is fine. We also have some post-combustion, post-combustion mitigation. We can put some filters, some scrubbers in our smokestacks, and that's going to capture some of those sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides that are being produced when we burn our fossil fuels. And then we take those filters and those scrubbers and we dispose of them in a landfill where they get rained upon. It's fine. We're fine. Everything is fine. Because we met all of our objectives and it's only been three and a half minutes, my friends. We defined acid deposition, acid rain, acid snow, acid hail, whatever kind of precipitation might be too acidic, which is a pH that is lower than 5.6. 5.6 comes from normal amounts of CO2. We talked about those examples of pollutants, nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides that can lead to the production of acid rain, acid snow, acid hail. We also described those pre-combustion, clean the coal, post-combustion, add a scrubber to your smokestack methods for reducing quantity of pollutants released into the atmosphere. Good work.